what we see in the video. Him putting the fire extinguisher on the ground and then raising the gun. Your Honor, I'm going to object. He's facing the wrong direction. That's an argument. Okay. To actually have, well, I'll leave it alone. So what you see in that video is his left arm, Joseph Rosenbaum. He's dead. So we don't know what he was thinking. We don't know what was going on in his mind. That makes him an easy target for the defense today because they can stand up here and pile on him and destroy his reputation and he can't speak for himself. That happens a lot in homicide trials. Blame the victim who can't speak for themselves. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Joseph Rosenbaum, and you've heard some testimony about him. He had been in the hospital, left it that day, had a clear plastic bag with his possessions, toiletries, a water bottle. We've all seen this. You get it in the hospital. It's pretty common. He's walking around like it's pretty much his only possession in the world. He visits Carrie Ann Swart, his girlfriend, and then happens to wander downtown into the middle of civil unrest. No indication he planned to be there. No indication he's part of any sort of movement. He just happens to stumble into it. So what does he do that night? Oh, let me tell you all the awful things Joseph Rosenbaum did. He tipped over a porta potty that had no one in it. He swung a chain. He lit a metal garbage dumpster on fire. Oh, and there's this empty wooden flatbed trailer that they pulled out in the middle of the road and they tipped it over to stop some bear cats and they lit it on fire. Oh, and he said some bad words. He said the N-word. And one of the things to keep in mind is that when the defendant provokes the incident, he loses the right to self-defense. You cannot claim self-defense against a danger you create. That's critical right here. If you're the one who is threatening others, you lose the right to claim self-defense. Then we have the chase that occurs after that. And we have taken that drone video and we have slowed down portions of that chase for you. So what we have right here on the screen, this is Exhibit 84, and this is the middle portion of that incident. And you can see Mr. Rosenbaum chasing after the defendant, throwing that plastic bag, and then the defendant turns and points the gun back at Mr. Rosenbaum. And this is the moment in time when Mr. Rosenbaum essentially does sort of a little hop with both of his hands in the air. And the defendant has testified. He saw at that moment that there was nothing in the defendant's hand, or in Mr. Rosenbaum's hands. He was unarmed. There's the defendant turning and pointing the gun. Mr. Rosenbaum leaps his hands out to the air, and then watch here at the end. This is where the shooting occurs. Mr. Rosenbaum is not even within arm's reach when the first shot occurs. 